Yeah. And me and Thomas, we deliberately didn't, I, I didn't want to like kind of prep any kind of topics or any questions because last time when we did it for the youth conference, yes. we got together and we had the best conversation yes. ever. Yes. And then we got on camera and we kind of like already talked about yes. everything and we were just like touching on things. And I, I felt like it, it, it was like not on kill the, the level. Kill the vibe, yeah. yeah. But uh, in the same time, she was one of the most favorite in the, in the whole times because she was her herself in her beautiful white dress fully looking like a princess not like queen. but but queen and princess <laughs> in both ways because so every time the men go like princess i'm like queen honey. yeah but you can queen, don't okay get it okay twisted. okay let's let's do let's make it okay twisted. yes let's do it queen queen yeah. way i love it yes so when you call me you call me king <laughs> okay absolutely yeah because I feel like to call a man anything less than that, mm -hmm. then you just wouldn't even call him anything because if you mm -hmm. call him a knight, mm -hmm. I actually just re read a really, really <coughs> amazing, interesting book by Alison Armstrong. Mm -hmm. I think it was called uh, The Amazing Development of Men. Mm -hmm. It was about like all the different stages of, of uh, the man's development from a knight to a prince to a king uh -huh. and how they behave and how like as their women, we should mm -hmm. behave towards them mm -hmm. where we need to kind of like tighten it where we need to loosen it mm -hmm. where we need to understand mm -hmm. where we need to kind of ask for less of their time where we need to be more appreciative mm -hmm. so all of that oh. and it was like the knights are all about adventure mm -hmm. and the princes are all about like doing the work mm -hmm. so there's like a 15 year old period in a man's life where they're just working 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 on their thing and then ultimately they'll cross over to a king where they don't like need to prove anything mm -hmm. to anyone anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating. Wow. And you've, uh, f you're feeling that you've leveled, uh, leveled up in the section where you don't need to act uh, in a way of uh, receiving any uh, feedback. You're just giving out your pure, pure love uh, of what you do, what you think, and then it's just like... Yeah, you know what, it's actually it's something, uh, something that I've really been working on, like a lot, mm -hmm. when I went to the nature, to live in the nature, because I came from this like music business environment where, you know, it was about like somebody would look at your numbers and mm -hmm. kind of your life would depend on it and like whatever. And, um, and uh, I was like really young when I got into the game and I didn't really have like any strong guidance or like, you know, so yeah, I, I at some point just got like really burnt out on that mindset. And then when I, when I went to the forest, actually the first thing, the first layer of shit that I dealt with, you know, because I, I, I think that like, you know, life is not so much about like becoming something, mm -hmm. but it's becoming less of what you're not. Mm -hmm. oh, so it's wow. like, yeah, because you just accumulate the conditioning, you know, mm -hmm. by your family, by school, by society, by like everything that you see in the news, which is like very deliberately programmed, not for your mm -hmm. highest embodiment to emerge, but to kind of like keep you small, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of like the deepest layers that I, that I had to like let go of and shed was the fear of failure mm. because I felt like, oh, look at me. Like now I'm giving up like this beautiful house that I lived in, in Hollywood Hills. You know, I'd look at the Hollywood sign with the palm trees and mm -hmm. just like, life was kind of looking very nice from the outside, but it was like very not nice on the inside and inside myself, you know? And so like when I went to the forest, I felt like, s I, I felt like everybody was gonna see me as like such a failure. Mm. And obviously, <laughs> the world outside doesn't really exist right the world outside is kind of just like a mirror so that was like one of the biggest layers that I started or the first first thick layer of shit that I had accumulated was to kind of like get rid of that whole thing like I don't need to earn anybody's love I don't need to earn anybody's approval you know I'm good just the way I am just because I was born you know and I was so tired that I felt like I, I just, uh, you know, I just, I can't give anymore. And I had to make peace with the fact that if I don't give anymore, if I don't make anything, mm -hmm. then I'm still super valuable. Mm -hmm. And also 
uh, I started learning about kind of like female energy and male energy, right? Because I was, I was in like a heavy male energy mm -hmm. with the go, 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 yeah, go. Yeah, That's yeah. male energy. Mm -hmm. So to, to go into the female energy when you're like soft and like you go to the woods and you're like, you look at the nature and you're enjoying and you're like feeling things in your body and like all of this, this whole totally, totally different energy. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that happened. I mean, I, we could we could make like a whole episode about it. <laughs> or write a book. Yeah. Well, like I wrote a book a, a little bit about it. How about the Dumalanna Paranemistavik? Right. Yeah. Well, it was. But it wasn't so much of a spiritual book. It was mm -hmm. more like a. Experience. Like a how to get over a breakup, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. How to be a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Kelly's uh, home is uh, such an adorable place. It's a uh, it's an uh, old town's. Uh, I could say in top three best view. So from the big, how you call it in English? It's a special window in this kind of a house. Uh, so in the medieval times, we are in the medieval Tallinn um, being built in uh, uh, 12th uh, century till up to 15th, 16th, 17th century. Yeah. And then uh, there was this um, house where you had to uh, different layers uh, of uh, housekeepings and then you if you wanted to have a water or grain up in the in the living rooms then you had to just like with a rope yeah. get it on top and then you had this whole system yeah. in here and uh, that's why it has uh, brilliant big windows in the in the old town because uh, normally they are very tight to keep the balance of the heat and cold yeah I have to make a whole uh, separate kind of house tour oh, yeah, because you can't do absolutely. everything. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, the old town is really interesting because, you know, there's no traveling this year. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, what, will, what would be the absolute, like, most amazing vibe that I could create mm -hmm. with the means? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think that, you know, yeah, old town and nature, these are kind of like our treasures, right? Mm -hmm. Tallinn old Very town much. and Estonian nature. These yeah. are the two things, right, yeah, that two. you would do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So, and this house is, uh, is very, very special. Mm. It was built in uh, 1303. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1303. Wow. So yeah. That's a very long time ago. And still everything is up smoothly and uh, can't say it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. It's still. <laughs> you know, it, it is up, but they're renovating the apartment next door. Mm. And they're saying that all those uh, old, uh, you see you guys, you see those beams? So they're saying that that kind of like all the beams inside the walls like Ooh. need work. So really, yeah. Oh. They're saying love the history lesson. Is it haunted? Fun fact: I have not experienced any ghosts over here. I've experienced really good vibes. Like instantly when I walked in, I was like I felt really good here. But I actually have a cat here. Oh really? You can't wow. see the cat because I got it from uh, from. Um, shelter rescue, rescue, rescue. Yeah. Wow. and so what i'm doing is i'm giving like um not like a f not like a real home but kind of the in-between homes mm -hmm. so i'm just kind of like i told them you know i just I, at some point i'm gonna like leave this place i'm gonna go traveling or something but i can just give like a temporary home because wow. i didn't want to take my own cats because i didn't want to take them away from the nature you know mm -hmm. i was kind of like dreaming about it a little bit thinking about it but then it's like I looked at like my cat Valor just eating like a big rat mm. in the south and I was like I have nothing yeah, to offer I have nothing to offer in the city but I just really felt like you know I love animals and I just felt like oh animals I need an animal here you know and I have these, these birds that fly in here that uh, really? they live on the ledges wow. the duvit the, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, doves yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know I was like okay I'll get a cat so I, I got this one cat here and it's a super traumatized cat it's afraid of people I don't know what it's mm -hmm. what it what was done to it mm -hmm. but it's constantly hiding so in these spots and uh, my friend was looking over my house last week when I was in the south and my friend is a medium mm -hmm. so he said that that during his channeling the cat came this cat uh -huh. that I have here and uh, and he said that there is a ghost of a cat here that is like scaring the real 3D cat. Wow, really? Yeah. So my friend said, yeah, I did a little ritual with like black cat hair and the this and the that. So now it should be totally ghost free. Wow, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it. Huh. I've been wondering what's the, um, what's the mission of uh, Kelly and uh, 
I've asked her many times, but I'd love to know. What's my mission? Yeah, what's your mission? What are you up for, up in here in this uh, uh, why am I here? yeah in this collective reality? You know what? Like a part of me, uh, like the, the 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 anarchist part of me wants to say I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. Like why am I? Sometimes I look at this guy and I'm like, uh, like you know maybe I don't even want to be here. I've had I've had thoughts where I'm like, why am I here? I don't want to be here. But then, you know, I told you like last time I saw you that I had like a health scare where I had like brain scans done and stuff mm -hmm. and turned out I was fine. And it, but it took me like two weeks of kind of like sitting here, like grilling, oh, like yeah. waiting for my results, you know? And then I realized like, I've been fucking ungrateful. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna make every effort that I can to be grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wake up every day and like stop whining mm -hmm. because I have a glorious life. People around me are healthy. The friends are great. We do what we love for a living, you know? But the main, the main thing I got like, like until you're healthy, mm -hmm. you really like, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing to complain mm -hmm. about. But now to go to the other side, uh, what is my mission in life? Um, I had this, this dream about me once or, or myself once where there was like an energy grid um, or like, it was it looked like a fishnet mm -hmm. and I saw that there was like um, there was like some of the parts have got had gotten black so I was taking the black parts out and I was putting the white parts in so I'm a light worker mm -hmm. like so many uh, all the moon children basically yeah. they're all light workers mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't know if it's a thing if it's not a thing but I'm here to heal mm -hmm. to raise vibration to create beauty mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and beauty is healing, raising vibration. And also um, at some point I had like a really powerful understanding that I'm also here to reawaken the goddess culture in the modern world. Yeah. Goddess culture, do goddess you want to share a little about it? I don't know about it. Well, it's just like the, the, just like the deep feminine essence, like the deep feminine power, you know, the deep feminine appreciation of, of the feminine body and like what it means to be a woman mm -hmm. and like how we can, you know, be in the harmony. Yeah. 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 And you know what? One thing I was thinking about, which is really funny because, you know, when you were interviewing me, all I was talking about how it's like so important to like be in pleasure all the time <laughs> and like no. to enjoy yourself and like this, right? We were talking about it like, yeah, but not all the time. Right. But, but just saying how you don't have to struggle yeah. and like whatever, whatever. And then after that, I was I read some more books and I did some like listen to some more like neuroscientists and whatnot and I realized that men and women are actually wired differently like you need to be stressed out mm -hmm. like you need to have a goal yes. and actually yeah and and I actually realized or I listened to this one neuroscientist that was super amazing that said that if you feel stressed out if you feel uncomfortable like you feel unhappy with where you are it actually sets your brain up to expand mm -hmm. more or like to create new like neural pathways better so that uh, so you can find solutions so you can find solutions mm -hmm. so stress in like good amounts mm -hmm. when it's not like your lifestyle and it makes you sick actually expands you mm. and i think it's better for men than for women because if men aren't like bringing yeah, home the bison yes. then they don't have then they don't they, they, they don't get that like testosterone yes. that they need you know so they have to go and like fuck a lot of girls do all of these things to like get the testosterone because they're not like doing their purpose thing yeah yeah but if you can change it then phew. yeah i mean find something you love get yes. good at it or like or or kings mm -hmm. kings like a, a man who's a king he takes care of his family mm -hmm. he takes care of his tribe mm -hmm. he takes care of the world you know like he has a lot on his plate he doesn't have time to like sit on instagram and like dm like randos mm -hmm. you know so so that's like the difference he gets his testosterone from the from the work the and the places. act and the uh, yeah, impact yeah. of the of the work. Impact of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or how do you feel? How do you feel as a man in the world? How do you feel as a man in the modern world? It's been changing a lot lately. I've understood that uh, maybe in let's say three to six months time or six to three months if coming from uh, back uh, that I understood uh, I'm a man who needs to take care of the 
community, take care of the tribe and take care of the room as well. So if you're going anywhere, you always check if everybody's happy, if everybody's doing great, if the vibe is great, if the music lights, you're always like, okay, I'm here. I'm here to create the space that will inspire other people to in the spot. Because if you're not inspired, then you can't expand uh, your consciousness. So that's, uh, that's my little uh, journey been. That's really amazing. Uh, by the way, you guys watching, uh, Thomas is only 28 years old, right? You're only 28 years old. That's crazy. And I see that. I see that how you're kind of like always like taking care of the room. It's yeah, but it's been lately. So, so <laughs> I can't right. well, because I we know. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah exactly. <laughs> Maybe you've been the change. <laughs> But yeah, I w went to interview uh, Kelly before the conference. The conference was in November. I, I had a pre-interview on uh, October to understand what's the stories and ideas and thoughts that I would love to know uh, in the in the life in life. And then uh, I was in the deepest uh, <laughs> shit uh, for uh, I don't know many years, and uh, because I messed up completely. Uh, and then I and we met at your vegan restaurant. Yes, yes. Thomas actually has a really restaurant. amazing <laughs> vegan restaurant. Oh, that was yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. of was, your pain. I was in depth and, and all these communication problems, etc. And then uh, I interviewed and then she was asking in the end, like, how are you doing? And I was like, after this honest, uh, pure, uh, loving conversation, I can't lie to you. <laughs> and then I told like deeply what I'm feeling and how I'm feeling. Usually I'm not spreading it like, oh, I'm feeling that bad. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, I need to share if you're asking. And that's uh, one of the key elements here. If you can truly ask that someone really wants to share, not just like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, good, okay, I'm going. But like really look in the deeply eye, deep in the eye and really ask and are willing to uh, give energy to listen. And that's what you were doing for me. I felt like whew, somebody is really taking like a listening of this uh, thought and really like empathy. I felt like, okay. And then she shared like some three, four wisdom uh, splashes on me. And I was like, oh, pff, I'm healed. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. And then this was kind of this uh, lights that you were sharing to me. And I was like, whew, wow. Uh, because the story, uh, I will give you, uh, I will finish up the story. No, no, no. Uh, I, um, uh, the topic of this uh, conference was uh, about uh, how to find your power. In Estonia, there's a word, uh, vaki. It's a little different than... Uh, yeah. More children know what vaki oh, is, okay. because I had a character named vaki in a music video. Ooh. So I wanted to just make her, make her like a woman. Wow, wow. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, the, that's the I think That's a good word, right? Yes. In Estonian. And then uh, the question was how to find the vaki, the power. The and then uh, but almost, I asked. But almost, the, sorry to interrupt yeah, you. Yeah, no. uh, almost Vaki is a little bit different than power. Yeah, it is, it is. Because it is. with power, you have to add inner power, uh -huh, right? Okay. Yes, when you say true, in English, you'd true. have to ask, you'd have to say okay. inner power mm -hmm. because you can't say, I want power. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. in Estonian, when you say, I want Vaki, mm -hmm. that like, that, that, that like directly corresponds mm -hmm. to like God and to your own body and like, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not like a frivolous, I want to rule over everybody type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then uh, I asked the qu many questions uh, from her and then she answered. And uh, after the small session in the end, I found that I've, <laughs> I've found uh, <laughs> the baggy. <Maggie. laughs> and I was like, wow, <laughs> this is so simple. <laughs> Just ask some questions and then phew, you're going right. to yeah, uh, splash it because we are all mirroring each other. And that's, uh, that's the way uh, we are interacting yeah. with the world. And I had a really interesting story with you, actually, uh, because, you know, I, I, I struggle with uh, sometimes I feel like like I overgive and I've actually in my life previously, like I've let a lot of people in that in the end turned out didn't really deserve to be let in, you know, mm -hmm. and and I've oh, just just the past few years for me, I've really been kind of like focusing on who do I let in? Where do I put my energy? Where do, what relationships do I nourish? What relationships do I let like fall away? You know, where, where do I, you know, how do I show up? And uh, then you got, you came over with like two of your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, 
before you guys came over, I was like, I should, I should probably order some. Okay, they're all vegan. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get some like vegan sushi. I'm gonna, because for me, like, I like grand things. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like little anything. And, and like, whatever, whatever I do in life, I only have like the one gear too, which is like, hard Hold on. Hold on. Nice. <laughs> so when when i do when i do career then i'll do the career when yeah. i do my relationship then i'll do the relationship when i do like you know everything for me is like i don't know i just i i'm a passionate person yeah. you know so it's like when you guys were coming over and i was like okay and it's, i'm gonna like make it really nice and then i was like i had like a voice in me that said no like stop giving so much stop giving so much to like you don't even know these people like stop giving and then i was like I had this internal like struggle and then I was like, no, I'm gonna show up like kindness is something that I value, like it's, it's, it's in my top three that I value in people and like truly deeply kind people. There's, it's not a very large percent of the people but I don't also want to make that generalization because maybe yeah, it's maybe just, it spread, maybe yeah. it's just my, uh, Maybe there's something in me that still isn't that unconditionally kind, you know, That's, that this is reflected back to me. But I had this moment of like struggle where I was like, oh, I'm going to go all out. And then I was like, I don't even know these people. Maybe I need to stop going all out for everybody. And then I was like, no, I'm still going to be me. I'm going to go all out no matter what this thing reflects, because this is what I believe in. This is the kind of people that I want to be around. This is the kind of people that I admire. So I'm going to like be that. And then you guys came over with like just packs of food and like gifts and like the most amazing vibe. And it just, it showed me like, I, I, I was honestly, when you guys left, I danced alone here for like an hour and, and I, I felt such a high vibe. And I was like, never stop showing up to your fullest potential, no matter what yes, the world is reflecting, yes. because no matter like what the glitch is in there, ultimately how you show up is how will be how, how you will be shown up too mm -hmm. absolutely because right? we are we are the creators thank you for this feedback oh, i love you. it anyway, <laughs> thank you wow. what do you think of that how do you function in the world because from what i understand you kind of like yeah I went to you're you are known in your friends to be like a very 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 giving yeah because i went to burning man hello <laughs> if you've been to burning man uh, three times africa burn three times estonian uh, burn events i don't know numerous uh, then uh, what's gonna happen is that you only uh, want to give because you've given so much of love of uh, gifts of attention of time of learnings, feedback, mirroring, everything. It's just a very intense experience. And uh, after my first event in Africa, uh, I, I could say I was a little different man, but then went to Burning Man, feeling like 10 days being on spot and really like there's no money on spot. Everything is like pew, 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 given so like deeply that the gifting over there is uh, without waiting any return so if I'm giving you the best gift you don't have to like oh, maybe I have a candy or a, yeah 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 posters <laughs> or something like no no it just gave and it's so beautiful so that's why I think I've changed uh, and over time I understood that my mission is to uh, share this uh, great uh, being grateful and being uh, giving in service uh, person and this is I hope my reflection to the world and inspiring and being aspiration for the others so yeah there's this uh, saying uh, kings rule by serving mm -hmm. so like I I, in, I now judge people like especially men by the way they serve mm -hmm. how much humility they have how, like how do they take care of everything surrounding them uh, yeah Thanks for reflecting. servitude yes. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think maybe the same for a woman right like absolutely, absolutely. like like yes. when you just like have this open mm -hmm. heart and you just like love everything mm -hmm. and everybody that's like the most beautiful mm -hmm. energy right mm -hmm. or I mean beauty is in the eyes of the beholder yes. of course some yes. people are looking for different things but but yeah, if for me at least. But if you're giving, then this is uh, it's such a deep uh, feeling of making happiness to the world. Uh, it's uh, a lot of times it's spontaneous the gift, so you don't uh, know that it's coming. Maybe Christmas, you know, but you don't know what's inside the box. So it's a it's a different uh, feeling. 
uh, that you're sharing to the world and it's it's like spreading I, I got this uh, I have this a few do dots over here uh, because of this I don't know stress maybe like you said too much like Pimples. yeah <laughs> and then um, then a friend of my uh made a like this uh, 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 how to say oil mix uh, together so I can uh, have uh, this uh, stuff on uh, this oil on and it it was uh, named on spot and then when I got it it was on spot because I was like I was touching this and she was like oh I have a gift for you <laughs> and I was like poof so that was uh, a, just a good example of how we can really take care of each other and notice and if we have capabilities if we have the let's say the inner uh, because uh, if you're giving you need to uh, be full yourself as well. So before sharing, you need to have uh, the capability of that your inner vaki is overflowing mm -hmm. and that's called abundance that can uh, spread the world. I have some Any thoughts. Number. I have some yes, thoughts yes. about what you're saying. So it's so funny because I was just, uh, I, I told you I have this spiritual teacher in the mm -hmm. south mm -hmm. of Estonia who I work with. Um, and um, I was just, it, Moon babies, I was in finally interviewing Hilla because in August I asked all the moon children to ask questions and I was just gonna kind of like give them the privilege to work with my spiritual teacher a little bit who actually only speaks Estonian, right? So I'm gonna have to translate the videos and whatever. But I just interviewed her for an hour uh, two days ago and uh, she was saying, and I've actually experienced that too, that sometimes you start giving and then you start feeling as you give like let's say you need like whatever you need in your life you start giving let's say and i, I have practiced that with, during some difficult times in my life where i felt like i needed love so i started giving love i started having like friends over i started nourishing them or when i i feel like i need nourishing i need nurturing i'd start having friends over and i started nourishing them nurturing cooking for them and it kind of like cultivated that energy in me too so it kind of like goes both ways mm -hmm. but i guess in that sense the giving does need to be unconditional because otherwise you'll you were already depleted and now you're feeling even more depleted but just to kind of like cultivate that energy and also to send the signal to the universe that you are full mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when you're giving it means i have plenty mm -hmm. because if you didn't have plenty yes. you wouldn't be giving mm -hmm. so it's like the more you're giving the more you're like and throughout the years, like since I was 20 years old or whatever, I used to do this crazy thing. Now I don't do it anymore. But when somebody used to tell me, oh, I like your bag, then I'd be like, take it. And I'd like oh. take, I'd take all my shit out wow. and I would practice wow. giving and like detachment of material things, you know? So I said, but now I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bitch, no, because <laughs> now I'm a minimalist. Yeah, yeah, so I only have, have I only have like five things and like they're good things and like hard to find. And yeah, it's yeah. like, it's, oh, it's like, yeah. But that's when I just used to have like a lot of crap, you know? <laughs> yeah. On the street, somebody's like, Phew. I like a shoes, and you're like, ooh, take my shoes. Yeah. Uh. Uh, somebody's asking inner growth and Carla Far Forster asking inner growth and outer growth. Mm. What's the difference? There's no difference, I think. Inner growth is uh, outer growth uh, reflection, so. Maybe it's uh, the only difference is that outer reflection will come a little bit later than inner growth because inner growth, but you maybe it's a reflection and you can't really feel it inside before you have seen it outside because you're visualizing, you're hearing, you're tasting. That's your how you interact with the world. But telepathically, you could do everything uh, on the on spot on time. But don't, you, but don't you think that when you're all, always waiting for things to show up on the outside, mm -hmm. you're always going to be dependent on the outside. Mm -hmm. And as the outside fluctuates, mm -hmm. because it does, mm -hmm. you will have success, you will have failure, you will have great moments, you will have shit moments, you will have this. And if you're always looking for that, like, or at least this is a big thing that I've experienced in my life that we're always like that we were also talking about the failure and like whatever when you're always like if I as an artist was always looking for an applause mm -hmm. I would have quit music before I even started making it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because there's just like critics and haters and shit talkers and this and that so it's like at some point it wasn't even like a luxury for me to kind of distance myself from 
anything and just go here and be like okay this is this this suit here this meat suit vehicle thing you know that i'm gonna be in what like average 80 years something for women you know like what is this what is this thing gonna do in here you know and and now actually <coughs> There were some moments when I'm like in the moon temple, when I live there in the south, you know, in the nature. I have had moments of clarity and connection where I have felt that I don't even have to go out of the forest to like achieve anything. Mm -hmm. Because I can, if I can, if I can I achieve it internally and not even it as a thing, but if I can achieve like the harmony and the kind of like feeling of abundance, feeling of success, feeling of pleasure uh, over what I do, if I can achieve it internally, I feel like I can, like, I can manipulate uh, the, the outside reality or it will kind of like re start reflecting back, you know, just like these moments of power, like sometimes. But is it uh, that you are in the nature is the best part of your inner world so it can be uh, out of plug and it can be yeah. really present? Yeah. I mean, but I, some, I have shit times in the nature too, mm, okay. you know, mm. I, have, I have hard times in the nature too, but I think nature definitely helps yeah. to connect, but it goes both ways, you know, you because you're also forced to look at your shit in the nature. Uh -huh, Here in the yeah, city, I don't have to, true. I don't have to look at my shit. Even when I, even when I sit in this apartment and I look out the window, mm -hmm. uh, there's there's information coming there are like air waves going mm -hmm. there's frequencies going through the air where i can't i'm not going as deep in here mm -hmm. when i go there mm -hmm. mm, can't escape anywhere like i'm completely aware of all my thoughts mm -hmm. and not all of them are great mm -hmm. you know yeah but th that's the part of growth of yeah no it's and great yeah. and the shadow work and yes. it's just life mm -hmm. you know and now it's like when when people for me, people who know their darkness are, people who know their darkness, for me are much more enlightened than the people who are light, yeah. <laughs> you know? Cause it's like, you're mm -hmm. just escaping mm -hmm. in my opinion, but you know, it's yeah, like, I you don't know the truth. Uh, like if, for me, if you haven't done your shadow work, mm -hmm. you are not enlightened. Mm -hmm. If you don't know like the darkest, fucking gnarliest, disgusting, hard to admit, embarrassing shit about yourself, mm -hmm then you're not woke yeah but how yeah okay uh, coming to the woke but uh how you've understood that now it's the <coughs> this is the hardest point this is the on spot black moment or on spot uh, this what do you mean how do you like the shadow work you've done mm -hmm. how do you uh, how do you know that you're doing yes shadow work? It, it, I, this one yeah probably as well but how do you know that this is the the deepest let's say you do never know if yeah, this is exactly. the deepest yeah. that's the thing mm -hmm. and it's like so many of my spiritual friends and you know I'm, I'm so lucky because i have so many people around me right now that are doing so much work on themselves you know and sometimes they're just like so frustrated because they're like i'm doing all this work and i still have these really dark times and this like you know wake up crying two months in a row it's like what do i do i've done all this work and it's just like it will never be over mm -hmm. You know, and there's this really amazing teacher, Abraham Hicks. She's like her student wrote the secret. Mm -hmm. She's like the manifestation like teacher mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So I've studied her for years. And every time I look at her again or listen to her stuff again, it like another layer of it unfolds as you evolve yourself, like your awareness, you're more able to understand. And she says, you will never get it done and you can never get it wrong as you're on the journey. Mm -hmm. it's, it will never be over. Mm -hmm. It'll be over when you're dead. Mm -hmm. But what happens? And then, then we don't know. Mm -hmm. We haven't found the consensus on that. We don't have scientific oh, we, evidence. Oh, we don't need to find consensus. Everybody can yeah. woke up in a different planet, a different uh, dimension. And, uh, I mean, do you think at some point we will though? Sorry? Do you think at some point we will find consensus? Do you think things will reveal themselves to our species? Mm, uh, or, 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 or do we need a great mystery? Yeah, that's a very deep question. Hmm. Yeah. Do we need a deep mystery? Yeah, I mean, we could just, yeah, yeah that's a fucking rabbit hole. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're done with this. <laughs> but we uh, we were speaking uh, speaking before about uh, about the uh, woke up people. What do you mean? What is a woke up? What? What's the criteria what, what would for be the definition of yeah. someone who's woke? Yes, exactly. What, uh, what do I judge? What do I judge someone uh, or their level of, of awareness by? Um, in everyday life, I actually judge it by very, very little things. For example, if someone is talking shit about their friends. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> for me, like that's a okay, like. We're not going to be friends because mm -hmm. I'm not going to invest mm -hmm. in that, yes. you know, just these little things. And I, as I was talking to my spiritual teacher uh, these few days ago, she was saying, she was saying, you know, because somebody, some moon child had asked that question. Can you evolve more alone in like solitude, celibacy, all of these things or in relationships? And my teacher, who some, some of our views like differ, mm -hmm. of course, we're different people. You know, she's also Christian. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, but but she says you can't evolve alone. You only evolve with other people because that's the practice. Yes, yes. So she said, once you cannot get angry at anybody, never feel like you need to forgive anybody because there's nothing to forgive. Mm -hmm. These kinds of things, wow. you know. Yeah. So she so says. She says, just 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 look at your relationships. If your relationships are great, you are evolved mm -hmm. if your relationships are shit you're not evolved yeah. because it's a uh, instant mirror that you're reflecting that's what yeah, she thinks at least yeah, yeah. but i judge by little things like who i who i allow into my life mm -hmm. you know so like do you gossip mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. do you cheat on your partner mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. you fuck guys who are married mm -hmm. get the fuck out of here mm -hmm. like all of these things you know so it's like for me it's just like Values, but these are uh, like <coughs> uh, uh, like actions, but uh, about the person itself. But it's not actions; it's integrity. Okay, okay, it's it's both ways. I can, uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. okay. But I'm just thinking, if the mindset is there, anything else you would add up? What's the woke up person mindset? So it's forgiveness like is something mindset. you will definitely. Agree? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if, if I am, if I just meet you and I have an hour long conversation, what things am I picking up on? You know, so like, like, how do I decide? Like, if you're just complaining the whole time, uh, you can't, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that I judge by that either, because I don't know what you're going through. Right. But just like, I mean, and then who am I? <laughs> To judge yes. so it's like a hard question yes. in that sense too you know I just like know what my values are mm -hmm. and what I want to align with mm -hmm. in my life and what inspires me and what kind of like inspires me to be the best version of myself so what do you think yeah I would say gratitude definitely is something that I But that's a practice yeah, but if the person is not practicing it, uh, she... If they're not practicing it. Yeah, it's, then she's not awoke, uh, awake because uh, she doesn't know the secret. So yeah, please uh, take a look of the secret of gratitude. And you definitely uh, understand that's uh, one way of understanding life. But that's uh, okay. my perspective. Yeah. Okay, okay, true, true, true. I would say, for me, someone who's not doing any work on themselves is totally asleep. And also just the victim consciousness of so like believing that the world is happening to you to me somebody who is evolved Understands and who knows maybe in three years will be like ha 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 look back at that conversation. You know, that was so basic <laughs> But like <laughs> It's gonna happen. hopefully yeah, definitely that means doing how something much, right. How much trust do you have? Would you is pour some wine? Huh? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think someone someone who's woke uh, takes responsibility for their own experience, life experience, and also understand that they are the creator of their own life, yes. co-creator, yes. yes. and are, are, are a deliberate creator. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I told you that story too, one of my friends who's going to come tonight, uh, her mom died. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she, in like two days, she, she, she wallowed in two days, and her mom died all of a sudden, and her mom was young. 
So she wallowed and cried for two days. And then she started practicing gratitude. She's like, and then I was like, okay, enough. I'm going to get into my heart. I'm going to open up and I'm going to start practicing gratitude. And she started practicing gratitude. She said people started calling. Some random woman at like her yoga class or something was, was calling saying, I have some money left over and I just had an urge to send it to you. Wow. It's just people started like giving to her and she called me and she's like, it's unbelievable. So this is a person who is extremely advanced in like during the biggest adversity of a lifetime, your mother dying. That's the worst thing that can happen, right? Yes. Yeah, I it's so. the worst thing. I mean, what else? Depends someone. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't have a mother yeah, or you're exactly, not close yes. or like, just, uh, getting but let's just say yeah, this is the closest think, yes, person yes. to you. This is the person you Could came you, out yes. of, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, and for her to turn it around in two days mm -hmm. and after that uh, she switched herself uh, going through her hardest time in her life i have never heard her complain about this i have not seen her break down which is not a bad thing to do like you have to greet your emotions you want to cry in bed for two years that's fine too but just to see the mastery of the mind and the understanding of the bigger picture and the kind of the the nature of life was just so impressive and like just those moments just make me like, wow, I'm just surrounded by angels, you know? So. We are surrounded by angels. Definitely. We are. Definitely. And all of you. Yes. Like these and, and uh, you know what? I am going to just say that because uh, I'm not going to be able to put into those uh, interviews with Hilla. That's, that's the name of my teacher. Thank you. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Uh, my, my spiritual teacher was so impressed with Moon Children's questions. She was like, these were really good questions. And I was like, yeah, I know these guys are advanced as fuck. Mm. Yeah. Advanced as fuck. Is as it? Advanced it doesn't as sound fuck. that good. But you can't translate. In yes. And only in English it uh, sounds really yeah. good. So. That's why I like being bilingual yeah, because yeah. there's just things that you can't say in English. Mm. There are things that you can't say in Estonian. Mm. One word, maybe I've said that, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but one word in Estonian that I really missed when I lived in America is Eviti. Evitze. Evitze. It's like don't Evitze. bother. Evitze. Like yeah. I can't be bothered. Yeah. But it's almost not. But it's not offensive. Oh my Evitze. Yeah, yeah, it means yeah. you know what? I'm just a little bit tired. Yeah. But I also kind of don't feel like it. Oh, you'll say Evitze, right? Yeah. Nice. And and your friend would be like, okay, they don't Evitze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get it. It's yeah. probably. It's, it's more like I'm um, Netflix and chilling. Yeah, yeah. I just might have a little like strep throat. Now you can't say that yeah. because it was just like, everyone's like, oh, <laughs> Corona. <coughs> okay, we have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. All right. Is there any question from the audience that would you love to do? Yeah. You know what? I am, I'm just going to answer a few of these mm -hmm. questions yes. that, that are seem to be popular. And mm -hmm. uh, more children are asking about the new music. Ooh, well, that's what, that was my next question. Really? So yes, I was telepathically, of course, uh, I'm in an interviewer kind of way here, but today we're doing together. I was thinking, okay, what's my next big topic? And I'm thinking that we are in telepathically in the same way. Understood. Telepathically. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, actually, really, um, yeah. I've done a lot of like different kind of creation than I've ever done before in this year, actually. And uh, a lot of people have felt like, you know, this whole time in the world has been difficult and it also has been for me, but it also has been really kind of like transformative. I feel like there's just interesting mm. like frequencies available. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I am very, very close uh, to sharing some new stuff with you guys. Mm. And uh, it's going to be very different from what I've done before, mm. which is what I always yes. I don't even try to do it, but I just I I, I just change so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be there's it's gonna be soon. And then uh, people are also asking about the book in English. Oh yeah, the book. The Keep book? that in mind. Remind her. No, Many because times. I did it in Estonian. Oh. I, d I think you missed it. Oh really? Yeah, I did this like women's goddess empowerment yeah, book in it? Estonian. It was like two years ago. Yeah, but now. Yeah, so but now um, I know now they want it in English. Yeah, exactly. But for me, it's just like I have limited resources, you know. Like time-wise, you mean? Time-wise, yes. energy-wise, because I don't just do things like yeah, I do it. <laughs> but then you can do it in different formative. You can do it in audiobook. 
No, I still want to do it in English. I actually yes. wrote it in two languages. But now I feel like I've already evolved so much from that two years ago mm -hmm. that if I did it in English, I'd kind of want to like rewrite yes, it yeah. and create like extra content and like maybe put it online. So that would be like two, three months of work for me. And uh, can you give it to her? Well, and and now Does she want? And, and, and now I'm already feeling like I'm not. Like, I'm not even in that place anymore, you know? I'm not like oh, some wounded woman over yeah. here, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> uh, crying over some guy who don't deserve it. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like, you know, so now I'm already like, yeah, it's like I kind of want to write a new book, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe write it in English. Mm -hmm. So it is still, it is still on my list, but it's low on the list. And uh, music is number one. And then there are just like tons of other things. So I might get to it. But don't hate me if I don't. No, we don't hate you. We yeah. love you, definitely. Yeah. A lot. Oh. We love you a lot. <laughs> <coughs> what else we have? Okay, we have seven minutes. Somebody says, yes, I recall our MySpace days. MySpace days. MySpace. There? Do you know what a MySpace? No. You guys don't know what a MySpace is. No, okay, you know. she knows what a MySpace is. Wow, Sorry. you were never on MySpace. No. But you're only, oh yeah, fuck, you're six years younger than me. So yeah, you were not a teenager. You, were, you were playing with cars. No, I was play, uh, playing in rate. Great, that yeah. yeah so you were going local. Yeah. I mean, you weren't going global yeah. yet. You were going local. <laughs> and then I went to Orkut, where the only Brazilian guys taking uh, over the Stony girls. And they were like, ah, Brazilian oh, yeah, guys. Yeah, Orkut. yeah. And then went to Facebook. So. MySpace was kind of like before Facebook, yeah. but it was actually MySpace was kind of like a bit of a beginning for me. Because MySpace, social. it was like a social media platform. And what I started doing over there is I started blogging about, you know, just kind of like it was a very emo blogging. So I was all about like, eh, Paris Hilton and all this, like all this shit sucks. And why is the... Uh, society worshipping all of that and like you know all that type of thing and then so many of these moon children some of them are still here actually a lot of them are still here um, yeah Start they, growing they connected so I was actually kind of blogging my, my thing was kind of growing blogging mm. before it was growing with music mm. and that's why I want to also one thing that I want to say to all the young artists out there walk in on air mm was on MySpace for like three years with like two plays a day. Again, my A&R at the record label and I, we just decided, we'll just put it online. But it wasn't really released, mm -hmm. but it was like with two plays a day. And then I started like answering to all the moon children on MySpace and like whatever. And by the way, moon children, when I called that community, the fans, like, you know, now everybody has like, oh, they, they have this like fan base and they have these like names for their fan base. No one was doing that. So it was just like a feeling. It was like, okay, call them moon children. It was like, I don't even know, 15 years ago or something. Mm, wow. <clears throat> and then, um, and then you know, it, it kind of, it, it grew, it grew, it grew because our community grew. And then somebody like at the label took notice and there was like, okay, here's like $150,000 make that video for a walk in on air. Wow. And like, let's go, like, let's put some money into it. Mm. And then it went big. So how good your mm. art is, has nothing to do with how it's received. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to keep it about how good your art is, you know? Because this other thing outside, it comes and goes mm -hmm. and it's out of your control, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. Totally agree. Uh, I, I had this uh, quick story. I was in LA four years ago, five years ago, and then I went to Uber and then I was like, oh, I'm from Estonia and then, uh, uh, the driver was like, yeah, I know Kelly. She's like, she's so awesome, like playing this. And then she put the, her Bluetooth and we were like, yeah, Kelly. I think the Blossom wasn't out, but uh, Walking on Air was definitely in the list. And I was like, wow, in LA. But then I understood that, yeah, maybe you had the connection with LA that big. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was in the States. It was uh, when it came out, it was like the most downloaded song on iTunes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. What, what year was it? I think it was 2008. 18. Wait, or was it? Or was it 2011? Oh, was it hey, no, no, no. Was it was 2008 it? or something. Mm. 2009. Oh. Yeah. And now you're getting some new music on. Tanga. Yeah. No, I'm always getting the new music, mm -hmm. but it's just like sometimes there isn't like a corporation mm -hmm. behind it mm -hmm. that like makes it. And also, I felt like 
okay i'm just gonna fucking spill the beans because who cares i felt like like at at some point when i moved to the forest and when my message got really conscious mm -hmm. some unconscious channels that are spreading specific messages mm -hmm. start stopped spreading my message wow. so i felt like a total like total different thing where it's like wow like they're kind of like not mm -hmm. wanting to spread that because my message was like don't consume this shit like take care of the content you put in your mind like live in the nature be get like off the grid like if i was in the states right now and and a lot of things i can't even say here on youtube because my channel will be deleted mm -hmm. like my reach on like even instagram is like limited drastically so definitely if Kelly's posts are up like yeah. them comment them yeah. so subscribe yes. subscribe put that put that little like bell notification and say like all all posts so you whenever you get i'm also about to launch like a email list oh, nice. so yeah i'm gonna be like prepared for everything mm -hmm. and uh again it just it comes down to that thing your self-value cannot be dependent on yeah. if someone else is clapping out there or whatever because all that shit's so corrupted like mm -hmm. you don't want to base your worth on that mm -hmm. Absolutely. yeah it's important Very one more minute so what do you uh <gasps> what do you have to say to the world what's your <laughs> I, ca I can actually put a fist in my mouth <laughs> i know it's bad no it's not bad uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful sound that's depending on the situation there. yes it's a very deep uh Beautiful, so. But what I want to do, you know, you know what I decided this uh, past few days when I was in the forest, I was in the forest and I, I found myself complaining mm -hmm. and I was like, what? Like what? I was like, bitch, stop complaining. Mm -hmm. So I think my goal for this year and just like in life moving forward, and there needs to be another different blog post about it because it's a, th it's a deep topic. I'm going to, um, instead of saying what I don't like, you know, like, t like today I was thinking, you know, I'm maybe going to make a list for this video chat to, to, to say, you know, I'm not going to allow this in my life and I'm not going to allow this in my life, not going to allow this in my life, la la la. I'm going to say, oh, amazing friends, gratitude, creativity, harmony. Start, stop worrying about what you don't want. Start embracing. thinking about embracing, embodying the things like all the deliciousness that is available to us in this world and like creativity and access magic 8 billion people who like a lot of are really fucking incredible beautiful and just to to to, to experience yourself through them to experience yourself through community and and through creativity and all of these things so i'm gonna stop saying no and start saying yes mm -hmm. and instead of fighting the old i'm gonna concentrate on building the new so, but that's a lot of training and like creating new neural pathways, but that's my goal. So, and that's what I wish for all of you. So. Welcome back. Uh, we're in the Deep Secret Show. Uh, we just had a beautiful journey uh, on live in Facebook with uh, Curly's uh, account. And lots of Moon children were there sharing thoughts and uh, asking questions. We had a very, very uh, deep uh, uh, functioning and lots of uh, inspiration full of conversation but I have few more questions that I would love to know about you and I thought I was in a, in a bathroom and I thought okay so what's the question that's my best idea <laughs> I know I know <laughs> and that's why I, sh I, I turned off the sound as well so I could be present fully present with myself and I was looking at the mirror and I understood that my latest deepest secret in life has been presence uh, and I would love to know more presence. about your presence and how you understand the presence and then I will further punch you until you presence. go deep mm. in the in the presence of your practices as well well uh presence is yeah I mean like like everything in life I think presence is something that you have to train and that's why like I'm such a big believer in meditation and all of these things because if you sit there even minimum 10 minutes every day and you thoughts come and you are at some point are able to say okay stop back to the breathing like or whatever your technique is then in your everyday life too when you start tripping you have the muscle 
because you trained your mind to say stop now get back to the body mm -hmm. and in uh, my most powerful tool that I found myself was the Vipassana meditation mm -hmm. which I did last year the 10-day course so coming back to the present sometimes is, is it's you have to train that's the thing you have to train everything you know but it's like even just thinking you know I'm gonna come back I'm gonna focus right now being in my left foot like right here and so what do I feel in my toes and whatever? So that will kind of like instantly snap you out of these other things. I used to be really big in, I don't know, I, I've just always dwell on my past mistakes and just, I made so many mistakes in my life. So it's like, I, I always think of all the ways that I've been bad and done wrong things and like all these things. And I used to just go like forever and ever and ever and ever and it could be for days, you know, Same thinking way. about just beating myself up, punishing myself. And now I've just like, I've gotten a lot better at it where I'm just like, it was what it was. I learned from it. It's gone. No one else is thinking about it, probably <laughs> just me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it's just like, come back here. Mm. But then it's, it's interesting because some spiritual teachers are like metaphysical people or like even some really powerful neuroscientists are saying that you kind of have to practice your future. But I guess practice it's... Your future. Yeah. I haven't heard of that. Basically, you, you condition your body for the best future. Yes, so you envision yourself already. Mm -hmm. There's this really powerful teacher, neuroscientist, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, yeah. Joe Dispenza, yeah, he's so great. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so great. So he, it, and it's, it's similar to like the secret and all of these theories where it's just like you kind of, you practice the feelings of the feeling of like, you know, and let's say you want to be in a loving relationship. So you're already like imagining yourself being in that relationship, like what it feels like. So you're, so he calls it remembering the future mm -hmm. instead of remembering the past, remembering the future because uh -huh. it goes both ways because your brain can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So you're practicing your perfect future because if it is true that we are the co-creators of our life, mm -hmm. then there's infinite possibilities in the quantum field. And when you practice that future, that will be the future, mm -hmm. most likely. Wow. So you're aligning like all your cells, all the, this crazy shit, like some cells turning on, some cells turning off, you know, like things that cause you cancer turning off, things that cause you like oh, good health turning on, like crazy stuff that you can do. like. I think they call it biohacking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Biohacking is something uh, really deep that is uh, kind of uh, like a blossoming, I would say, in a, in a whole world. And yeah. uh, lots of uh, uh, conscious people understand that this is the way to nurture your body, your mm -hmm. mind, your soul, and really have it uh, blast in the way of uh, everlasting fire. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just like from yourself to the outer world, uh, yeah. But uh, how many times a day you're thinking that, it's a little random question, but still, how many times a day you are forcing, or let's say, surrendering yourself on the question of, am I present now? Or can I come to the presence now? I mean, maybe I, maybe five times a day, 10 times a day. Like, I do remind myself, yeah, constantly. And now I'm kind of like, hmm. I did an in interesting experiment uh, one, one month, uh, for one month when I was in the forest. Like I did t took a whole month and every morning I would wake up, not look at my phone. I would do yoga. Mm -hmm. Then I would meditate just to get like focused. Mm -hmm. And then I would do affirmations. Mm -hmm. So I do affirmations about uh, just how I feel in my body, my career, my relationships, everything. And then I would also, while I was doing the affirmations, I had like this jug of water there. Mm -hmm. And I would also charge the water oh, with the affirmations. So all the water that I was drinking was like that, you know. So I do like an affirmation saying, I'm a goddess. Mm -hmm. And then I would do it for the universe, say, I'm a goddess. And then I would do it for the water, say, I'm a goddess. And in 30 days, I cannot tell you like the way I felt like just, I felt like blissed, wow. you know, blissed. Like th these are the times where, where I really do the work, you know? And it's funny, it's like when you really do the work, then you get the results. It's plain and simple. I read this one interview from this Buddhist monk and he went to his teacher and his teacher said, have you done your practices today? 
<laughs> I said, well, no, it's like, well, then don't come talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're not meditating, you're not working out, you're not taking care of your body. You're not like, you're not doing the work. Then don't be like a victim thinking somebody else out there can save you. So what's the work for you? Uh, yoga, meditation, what else? It's the daily practices, let's say. The daily practice, my, my, my daily self-care practice, uh, now I've put the affirmation back in mm -hmm. because I realized that stuff, like, yeah, it yeah, works. Yeah. It, it, it on, works. Yeah, yeah. It really <laughs> works. But yeah, normally uh, when I'm in a good place, sometimes I'm a slob, yeah, yeah. you know? Sometimes I say you just can't be dubli all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Estonian, we have this word dubli. dubli. It's everywhere. Like yeah, always. dubli. I gotta be dubli. It's just <laughs> sometimes I'm terrible, mm. really. Sometimes really terrible. But um, can I put the music? Yeah, Video post. <coughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, no worries at all. <sighs> Adds character to the video. Uh, but when I'm doing really good, yeah, then I wake up, I do yoga, I meditate, then I lift weights. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So what kind of muscles? Uh, everything. Everything. Okay. Yeah. I lift. I, I actually put them in the other room because people are coming to the birthday yeah, party. They want to. But I normally just have like the deadlift, you know, or it's just like a deadlift and everything. And it's, it's the kind of meditation. And it's also because like after you're 30 years old, like your muscle starts decreasing, your bone starts decreasing. So to lift weights is like when you're 75 and you, w and you fall, your bones aren't going to break because it's got the strong muscle around it. So you don't have that decreased muscle mass. So I do that. And uh, yeah, then I do the sauna, the infrared sauna. Yeah, yeah, no, and now I started because I, I recorded my affirmations. So now when I sit in the sauna, then I play the affirmations. Mm, nice. So I meditate in the sauna. I do like 30 minutes and then I take a shower and then I get to like to my day. Wow. But but and, and actually here in the polar winter, I also take like an hour walk every lunch when the sun is the highest. Uh -huh. And that's how I can make sure that I'm never depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, but it takes a long time. It, like my self care takes like the first three, four hours of my day. Mm -hmm. And I know that everybody don't have that luxury. Yeah, now, so yeah. It's like three to four hours. It's a lot. That's a lot, but that's why you, you look so great. You look so happy. You look so beautiful inside, outside. Wow. Thank you, because but not always. <laughs> yes, we are not always the yeah. same anyway. Yeah. When I do the work, mm -hmm. then I do. Yeah, and everybody does yes. when they do the work. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, rituals. We were uh, before spoke speaking about spoke speaking of spoke about uh, the being the creator of the world of the reality. How do you understand that? Or when did you understand and how that you are the creator? Something you think of, you apply all the rituals on it affirmation visualizing that was the sign of a uh, good question i hope or good answer coming up uh and then yeah when did you understand and uh, how that that this the, all works this all works yeah exactly. i think in a, on a small scale <coughs> i understood it when i was a kid mm -hmm. and i was kind of born into an environment that was really harsh for me mm -hmm. and so i started like escaping into my fantasies about like being an artist and like creating this life and like making you know being on stage and like whatever and it was just it was something that would give me a good feeling so I would actually first start it as an escape thing so that I would have one place in my head where I could go to that felt good mm -hmm. you know yeah. and uh, Very interesting, uh, yeah wow. uh, but it wasn't startup. conscious mm -hmm. okay, okay it was an escape mechanism you know I think when I actually started really truly believing it with like every fiber in my body, maybe like maybe five years ago, I was able to really like spread my wings and like really, f really know it, mm -hmm. you know? So when I, but sometimes I still doubt it, mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes I still doubt it for, for example, sometimes like I'll go to the forest and I'll meditate and I'll do all these things, right? And I feel like, oh, I'm so enlightened now. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Los Angeles <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like so fake <laughs> yes, yes. and I see like all of these these vibes and, and, and people and I'm just like, oh, why am I attracting this? So maybe I'm not that enlightened. Or you're enlightened that you should do the work for them and they are showing that they need help, they need love and you have the knowledge, you have the 
inspiration, aspiration to share it to these people? Because you have... Well, I don't... Uh, but, but, the, but it's kind of like a little bit selfish to think that you need... Oh, for these people. Like, I don't know these people. I don't know what their journey is about. Like, I'm not above anybody or below. So it's like, I don't know, you know, but still maybe I'm, I just haven't been able to get that advanced, mm -hmm. you know? So maybe I've thought that I was advanced, but maybe I haven't been. Mm. I definitely uh, think that you have. It's a good test. Test, but you are advanced. Uh, I mean, uh, could be worse. Yes, could, could, be, could be better. Could be better. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I was thinking before that uh, when we are creating the world, then uh, do we have the full capacity of trust that the planet Earth, something so unique with so divine a divine uh, nature and such a great place to visit all over like from one side to the other side to the circle etc but do you think or believe or agree that we don't need to do anything to save the planet or shall we do our part of work to save the planet yes. oh yeah because you're a Laika <laughs> yes Oh, okay, so, so these conscious topics are very dear to your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy because, you know, when I live in the nature and we live so, I live so like sustainably over there, it's almost a little bit hard to connect with these thoughts of like all these cities like polluting and like everything because I live, you know, I take the water from, I collect the rainwater and I wash myself and I like chop the wood from the forest and I like do the sauna and it's like we grow our own food you know in the summer and it's just like so it's, it's almost hard a little bit but i definitely think we need to take care of our planet mm -hmm. same way as like taking care of your house mm -hmm. taking care of your body mm -hmm. so the planet is just kind of like another extension of that yes so i am a uh, a fan of the trend that's happening in the world and thank you for being in the forefront mm -hmm. So what do you believe that what's in our, our capability of of taking care of the planet? Like like how much can we do or yes. like what or how, like how what? much or how can we do it? How can we do it? Yes, like like I can why, why, I can collect me? I can collect rubbish but uh, or I can uh, Yeah, you know what it, it's like I think it's like Elon Musk said yes. we need a we need a spiritual evolution mm -hmm. species wise. Mm -hmm. Right? So we need to we need to evolve to the point it's like you can't you can't force somebody to like have more compassion or have more understanding it's it kind of starts on the individual level of like doing the work and also i think how we treat the people around us not just ourselves and how we raise our kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our community kids in our community yeah exactly so yeah i i, I tr truly believe that we all have a capability of uh, building ourselves the best mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. How would you like to interact every mm -hmm. one of us? That's the only way. Yes, exactly. You so that's the only you way. Change <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely taking little steps, but what uh, kind of steps would you recommend for just like an everyday person who maybe haven't even thought about that before? Yeah, first of all, I can say I'm uh, fully vegan. So uh, I would say this is an uh, option that I have agreed that I will survive eating and living like this in the way. and. Uh, it's helping uh, to save a lot of planet's resources and uh, we're ca all capable of it. But also being uh, just uh, yeah, the best way example, but being a really truly loving person to every person, every plant, animal situation. And uh, when you spread the love and gratitude, you, everything is blossoming everything is you like it's the same as you talk to the plant or talk to the water affirmation this is the energy you're sharing out if it's a love energy then it will whew, the higher resonance will come and frequency will rise mm -hmm. so uh, definitely speaking. but one thing you left out when you were naming all yes. the things we need to love mm -hmm. yourself 
Yes, self love. Self love, number absolutely. one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because how can you even love? You can't. You can't love anyone can't. else. If yeah. you're lacking the mm -hmm. feeling of love, then you can't love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the sa same. You have to have inside abundance out. of inside love. Out. The mm -hmm. movement happens inside mm -hmm. out. I believe. Mm -hmm. But how uh, is there any practice you're doing for self love? Yeah, I told you my self care routine. Mm -hmm. So if I do the work, then I can feel the love. And if I don't do the work, then I feel like shit. But in a, in a sense of, okay, this is a morning ritual, but uh, after morning rituals... But what else? Say? What else do you love? What else can you yeah, do? Yeah, but you can, in, in your work position, you can always... If, for example, mm -hmm. if you're doing music and you're not happy with some music, you're not happy with the voice, uh, sound of your voice in some sp sp specific topic or mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. then how would you... I train my voice then. Train, yeah, okay. Yeah. Then this is a practice for being better, but right. how you can... But Accept that yes, my voice well, now so is like this, you're right. and I so love it. The, I love it. In the morning, when you do the yoga, yes. you do the meditation, you do the affirmation, you do the workout, you go for a walk, and you're kind of conscious about who you surround yourself with and what kind of information you put in your body. Mm -hmm. Then you're. Then, you then what's the problem? <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, no, yeah, what's yeah. the problem? Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> Someone so dies, <laughs> but that's life. Yes. You know, you get sick, but that's life. You get old, things start like coming down. <laughs> There's gravity. <laughs> but that's what, that's what, like one of the Buddhist things. It's like they, they have these five things that they practice every morning. They say aging is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Illness is inevitable. Death is inevitable. Everything you love, uh, everyone you love will change. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what the fifth thing was, but it was just like, oh, and then you're just like, well, okay. Then you, you take care of your body, you center your mind, and then you, you practice love, you practice gratitude, and that's really all you can do, right? But isn't it part of releasing? I just recently understood that uh, when you release something, uh, for example, you release a truth, something that you've been hiding, for example, then all of the sudden you are so full. In the same time, you just released something, information to the other people, and then it's... The, kind of getting out of yourself but you feel full but what kind of release are you talking about like releasing some kind of secrets that so negative hiding. things yes that's shadow work yes okay I, I feel like in when you actually start working on your psychology mm -hmm. when you start doing the deep work with like therapy mm -hmm. this it's not spiritual mm -hmm. shadow work is a Carl Jung term mm -hmm. so you when you know your bullshit mm -hmm then then you own it all then you you see your darkness coming up you hear that little voice in your head that will say ah, i don't belong here like i'm not good enough or like i'm ugly or like whatever i'm not lovable and you're like hi ah, you little motherfucker like i know you <laughs> you know this isn't like something that is secretly running some program that is secretly running anymore that you're not aware of but you've done your shadow work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know your shit. so if it comes up you know so then you can just be like okay sit down uh, but yeah, re releasing or letting something go. Have you experienced mm -hmm. that this is something you've come up with? Yeah. That if it's a secret or not? Well, letting go is really hard for me. But it's, I don't know what you mean with the, with the secret. That's, it's the shadow work. Yes. Yes. You know your dark shit. And then if you can also, if you can let everybody know about your dark shit, then you're like a real soldier. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, because when I first started doing shadow work, maybe like five years ago with my spiritual teacher, I would I'd like go to her and I would just say like, I, 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 I never told anybody, I haven't even told anybody, but it's so like a demon inside me yesterday at night. And it is so scary that I would never want to say this to anybody. And this is now I'm like, yeah, I have demons, I have angels, I have like all the realms, like I'm a, I'm a human. I'm 50% light, 50% dark. Mm -hmm. And I'm not probably even 50% dark anymore, <laughs> you know? I'm pretty light. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm pretty light, but I'm very comfortable saying that I'm half dark. Mm -hmm. And that means that you've integrated. But uh, for ex it's just a very good thought, but uh, letting go, for example, you're letting go that you're a magician. But I am a magician. Yeah, but for example, is letting that... Letting go of that identity. Yes, and then this something truly can come back to you as as you truly are but but for me uh, a musician is not an identity anymore it's a life purpose so, so you can't i don't need anybody else to think i'm a musician or to buy my music i mean it's nice it feels good but i don't need it 
like I will make music until I die because I cannot make music because I will die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Pretty impressive. I'm very grateful for this uh, honor uh, of interviewing such a great gem of uh, our planet. Likewise. Yeah, a good mirror. <laughs> and hey, uh, <laughs> girl! Hey. <laughs> I'm really, really happy. Uh, I have one more last question okay. to you. Go. How do you feel is the collective year of 2021 going to happen? We mm -hmm. have one month done. It's mm -hmm. January. How does it feel for you? <laughs> for me, I would say uh, quickly, I would respond to it. I would say it's a great awakening. It's uh, something that we the haven't. Great awakening hashtag is banned on Instagram, by the way. Oh yeah, it's banned. Really? Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Because yeah, we can't, because it we violates can't. the community policies. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We have a mission. Great awakening for a lot, you for a big wake community. Up no yes. <laughs> Those shall not. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Splash. Yeah. What do you feel? The same. Yeah. I feel like uh, a lot of things are going to really break down. A lot of things are coming to the surface. I'm at this point in the summer. I got a little bit too caught up with all the scary things that are the undercurrent that you don't you can't get from the mainstream media. And now I've just gotten to this neutral place, you know, like today. Uh, some of my friends are a few of my friends are not coming because they're afraid and I respect that. And I kind of like respect the whole spectrum of this kind of narrative that's going on. So I can be chill, I can be not chill, like I can, I can agree, you know, I can take part of this thing that we're doing, okay? And I can also, you know, look at other alternative theories and kind of fill them out for myself. So I think it's really important to find the truth for yourself. Find the deep truth about yourself. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much again. Thank it was you. a great pleasure to yes. have this happening in this yes. uh, beautiful venue with such a deep thoughts. And uh, it's like a philosophy that's going to your mindset and it's changing uh, small cell by cell, your uh, inner beauty uh, for, for being a better. Like yeah, just do. here to share the ride, really. Because yes, it's like everybody's going to still have to do their own experience and find their own truth and find their own narrative. It's like no two people are alike and no, no two narratives and no two lives are alike. So to each his own and we're just blessed to have each other to kind of bounce off. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's bounce back again soon. Ciao. See you very soon. Bye. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>